Hello and welcome to Soul Love with Kimness. I am Kim van der Zanden, your host, and I'm super excited to share another episode of Soul Love with you, where we share inspirational and empowering stories from the heart. We talk about the beauty and the shadows as both are part of the ascension journey, to remind you that you are powerful, you are magical, and to have trust in what you feel to be true deep within. Enjoy this next episode of Soul Love. Before we start the next Soul Love conversation, I want to invite you to check out my amazing book, Activating the Flower of Love, a sacred guide for manifesting your deepest desires and highest calling. This sacred book filled with powerful tools and activations will guide you to open your heart to the beauty and wisdom within you, empowering you to create the life you deeply desire from the foundation of love. You can find Activating the Flower of Love in all the major online and offline bookstores in ebook or paperback, or you can check it out through my website, kimnes.nl, where you can also discover the different ways of working with me and the latest updates on new starting programs. Enjoy this next episode of Soul Love. Welcome beautiful souls. Today I have the honor and I'm excited to share a beautiful soul love conversation with a beautiful soul, Good Eliva Willer, and I welcome you within this sacred space. Hello everyone. Hello Kim. Thank you so much for having me on your lovely show. It's really an honor to share the sacred space and it's beautiful. I, we already shared a little bit previous, but uh, you're living in Canada now, but you also lived a time in Belgium. So you were already teaching me some Belgian words. I'm from the <laughs> Netherlands. So it's like in some way similar language, but I lo always love to hear new things. So, but I welcome you and I, and I love your passion as it is my passion about embodying our truth, embodying uh -huh. our wisdom and from that space, sharing with others. And maybe you want to share like maybe some pivotal moments in your journey that can spark this conversation in beautiful ways that helped oh, you man. to stand in your light and your truth and where you are inspiring others today. Oh, nice. Thank you for that chance. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thanks for having me on your show. And when we first met, it was that, you know, I love the, the name, the Soul Love um, podcast is perfect because you have such authenticity and such a beautiful heart. And for me, someone who, you know, I'm I'm a seer, I'm a clairvoyant, I'm highly like um, open that way. For me, it, it looks like a relaxed heart and a, a heart that modulates and has dynamism, right? So I often teach about that because often through life's traumas, et cetera, are all of our heart wounds, our hearts kind of begin to restrict and close down. And so it looks mm -hmm. like it doesn't vibrate as much. It's, it's stagnant, it's stuck in areas, but you have a nice open, relaxed um, heart and that translate into like a authenticity and like a, a quiet, like kind of knowingness, right? The connection yes. to your, to your greater knowing and, and the love that you are, right? Um, you. Yeah. So if I could share just a couple things about, um, about kind of my, uh, my life journey and that maybe uh, to help others. So first of all, I was born really awake already turned on or you could say it wasn't completely shut down like the yeah. program is when we come into embody we we go through a veil we forget who we are right yeah. um that didn't quite happen with me so i was really turned on with all of my clairs and and so much more um but uh as you can imagine in the environment i grew up in just the outside world but even in particular in my family um that was really terrifying for my parents you know it was yeah. very clairvoyant i had visions i had premonitions i could hear things and you know they didn't understand mm -hmm. how i knew things and they thought i was you know eavesdropping all the yes. time and like it was just yeah. you know um and but the key part of that is that i had that oneness consciousness Mm -hmm. right that connection that we're all one i never felt separate from from anything and so i had such deep uh meaningful relationships with literally everything so like the plants on the property i grew up in a farm in the middle of nowhere so i grew up and i had these relationships with plants and animals and even inanimate objects like matter i could somehow like know that that was part of me that there was there was this connection between us there wasn't just the, the connection didn't end where my body ended Right. Mm -hmm. And so that um, created a very confusing life for me. And the reason why I say this is because many of us, especially those who tune in to these types of programs now, have mm -hmm. some kind of memory of variances of things that might remember 
you know, talking to an unseen being when they're a kid or having an imaginary friend, or they might remember really, you know, having a deep connection with their family pet or, or a tree, let's say a lot of people have really, um, unexpl can't explain their feelings towards a tree, let's say, right. But there's this natural affection, right. And so that's there. So fast forward, because this is a really long story, right. Everyone's life is such a long story, but just uh, a couple of key points is that, um, so that was a very creative, very confusing life for me because I didn't understand that the people around me didn't feel and see what mm -hmm. I saw because it wasn't talked about. I grew up in a very strict religious community. And so I was, you know, it was very much, yes. you know, <laughs> punished yes. and told to never talk about what I see, never, you know, don't talk about this weird stuff. Anyway, so it shut down, which so many of us do, right? We get shut yeah. down at an early age, right? And so- I started really trying to fit in mm -hmm. and really like it. I was well into my twenties before I really realized that, wow, like my life is really at risk if I don't try and fit in here. Right. Cause I was just ostracized and just, you know, so weird. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I just tried so hard to fit in and in that trying to fit in, I just shut away and pushed aside my true self because that wasn't accepted in this world. Right. So yeah. everything about me that the world did not uh, receive well, I tried to push away and pretend that I wasn't that. And so I really polarized mm -hmm. into like a, I would call now a masculine left brain way of living and never talked about that other side of me. Right. And so the reason I'm bringing that up is because so many of us have also done that right? Yes. We've polarized into our, our left brains because it's safer there, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. fast forward, you know, that didn't last too long. Um, fast forward, long story short, I, through a series of events and hitting rock bottom, I finally just couldn't live so against my true nature anymore. And I had the realization that, oh my goodness, the reason why I'm different is because I'm supposed to be different. And that's why I'm here. My difference is what's yeah. going to make a difference, mm -hmm. right? And that I was never supposed to fit in. And that me trying to fit in was ridiculous because that's not why I came here. I came here to show something different, to bring something different, to offer a different alternative, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so again, why I say that is because so many of us struggle to fit in we hide those uh, parts of ourselves that we think people are going to make fun of us about, right? And we just try and show the world what we think is uh, the world wants to see, right? Those templated <laughs> archetypes yeah. in society, right? Yeah. Um, but it's really about, especially if you're tuning into this program, it's it's really reclaiming who you really are. And stepping out with your unique abilities, your unique gifts, because that's what the world needs right now. It doesn't need more of the old same. No. We need the new, you know, the, the people who are tuning into this show and things like this. Like, we need what you came here to express and to bring. Yeah. It truly is. And, and there's also the key, embracing our uniqueness and really owning who we are. But there is so much at the beginning of your life and I think a lot of us can relate to that it, like there's so much fear about things that we can't understand or as we grow up our parents don't understand all the visions yeah. or all the ideas or even like the being too enthusiastic or too whatever it's like no we need to go into this norm of how everyone is and and there are so many layers that have been pressed upon that and now we're yeah. all being invited to unpeel all these layers and to come back to this essential part because that is why we are here but it's yeah. also understanding and i think that's a big part as well to sometimes not be afraid to to be on your own or not be afraid to be part of the group because in the end what i love in your story and and at one point your soul will keep knocking on your door so loud yes. because the light it needs to go out somewhere you're yeah, yeah. You're shining. <laughs> there, there is there will be a point in your life where the masculine and the fitting in will crack open and sometimes it happens in very challenging ways because we're not willing to listen if we're also for me if we were willing to listen earlier to our soul or to our inner guidance our soul didn't have to create all of these yes. changes in our lives or all of these wake-up calls but it truly oh, yes. but it's I have a lot of those yes. I was really stubborn headed the universe yes. really had to slap me upside the head for me to get certain things because all the fears we have right like 
yeah. once, you know, like I ended that part of the story, like I, I realized that, you know, I needed to be myself. Well, it didn't all of a sudden the next day I'm, I'm right. coming out talking. No, I had so mm -hmm. much fear and terror to work through because, you know, my whole life to that point, it, everything the world showed me was no, that gets you in trouble. That gets you ostracized. That gets you made fun of. You lose friends, you lose family. Like, so the, the idea of now, oh, it's all of a sudden now safe to come out and be me. Like, no, that took a long time for me to work through stuff. And, you know, I didn't have the benefit at that time. Cause I really, I didn't know that there were circles like this that existed. Mm -hmm. And even really, there was very few back then, you know, this is really a relatively new phenomenon, but it's just rapidly popping up this rapid awakening, right? Um, but, you know, I just, at a certain point, I didn't like, you know, it was before the internet too, right? So the, yeah, yeah. It was different. I'm aging myself now too, but, <laughs> but yeah, so it's different now. You can, yeah. you know, find uh, like-minded people and you can find things like that, like, um, so it's a lot easier uh, now to connect than just everything that's happening on the planet right now. There's a yeah. conversation globally about this kind of yeah. stuff now. Yeah. Mm. But it's still, it's also understanding that it's still in one, in, in certain way, a, a choice. And it's also, it asks commitment and it asks a certain bravery to break free from society or break free from all the conditioning or break free from the people pleasing or, or the patterns that are there Absolutely. to fit in. And, and that really, I think for every one of us, like when you're tuning in, you're on this path of, of, of this leading edge, new earth way creating, you're being invited to create something that has been, has not been shown on in the world. And that is like that can activate your triggers your your comfort comfort zone will be shown will. Like, yes Absolutely. and that's okay yeah. yes and and that's what i love about sharing all of these stories with all of you like we are all we all went through that and in deepening cycles we're going through that again yes. because we're constantly evolving we're eagerly to grow and to expand and to embody these higher codes of wisdom that is ours to share with the world but it's also inviting us each time to crack open all these layers that are blocking that are but i really love the 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 energy of our light is so powerful within yes. and it will help us but when it's almost like okay but are we willing to let that lead us or are we willing to let the mind lead us and i don't, ha don't know how that was in your in your journey but what supported you to to let the mind go at ease or let the mind feel was safe enough to follow this calling of your heart, <laughs> follow the light. Yeah, so it was a long, a long journey. Um, so the knowingness, so there's kind of, uh, of all the people that I see that I'm drawn to, there's two profiles that really stick out. One of them is the person who has always had this feeling with, within them that there was something they had to do that there was and there's this feeling like you're waiting for the right time or you're looking for it outside right yeah um the other person is um i call it they had hit their second phase of life mission so they've gone the first half of their life do yeah. do 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 not thinking about any of this stuff and then all of a sudden they start getting these nudges and they start getting really curious about oh spirituality or my gifts what what am I here for what's my purpose right um but your back to your question was what helped with the mind yeah so the first group of people you know you have this knowing right so that that helps in that it's like you're you're constantly you know listening for and looking for those clues right mm -hmm. um and the second group now that you kind of awaken to it and that you have this curiosity it's the same thing now so it's about like you said the the commitment and the paying attention to the nudgings you're getting right mm -hmm. until you have your internal your guidance system really working for you right mm -hmm. for me it was a real struggle and i think the part of the reason why everything was such a struggle for me was so that i can teach it to others and be empathetic right um, but I had a real attachment to my ego because, mm -hmm. and I, I was guided by my guides to journal everything during that time. And I'm so glad I did. So it's amazing when I read back, right? Like a completely different person, right? Um, I was so ego identified and because I liked her, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> I thought she's so nice. She, you know, does all these beautiful things. She has mm -hmm. all these nice hobbies, all these friends, like, you know, it's like, so I didn't want to let go of all those mm -hmm. things. Right. Yes. But in January of 2011, I had a rapid descension of my higher self into the body, yeah. which took several months to kind of complete. And in that time was incredibly intense. I wasn't working, wasn't leaving the house. I lived like a hermit. 
and I was just journaling a lot of what I was going through. And I, you know, I literally, years later, I found out of this concept of the death of the ego. And that's literally what was happening. I literally was crying and mourning the death of my persona of who I thought I was, right? For the majority of people, it does not happen so dramatically. But that was my soul's life path that I, the first part of my life was like intense trauma, intense learning, intense, you know, um, all the, you know, negative stuff. It was not fun, <laughs> you know? And then it was like, okay, now it's your time to wake up because now you got to, it's now it's time. And yeah. so I had that knowing that, oh my gosh, it's time now. I didn't know what that looked like. And then I had this, you know, dissension of my higher self-consciousness. And then it was like being in a car and all of a sudden I got, the first stage was I got kicked to the passenger seat and my higher self was in the driver's seat. But my, my, my identity mind was in the passenger seat commentating the whole time. Like, you know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. And then eventually, you know, the higher self takes front row and center and, you know, your ego mind, your human vehicle mind, which is very useful. So I don't ever naysay it, right. It's very oh. useful, but it's like way in the back seat and you can, it's just like, if you need to ask it a question, you can ask it a question, but it's not running the show anymore. Right. <laughs> yes. That's an important. Yeah. yeah. But it's also understanding that's a whole process. It's a whole transition. And I love, as you shared as well, that you really like the image of the ego because that she was nice and she was, Doing yeah, and that's beautiful that's hard, thing. right? <laughs> it is. No, it is. But but I also love because that, that's what I know. It's in my own journey. The more love I embody, it also means I'm embodying more truth. And I know you're also passionate about that because sometimes for the outside world, it doesn't look so nice or it doesn't look so because you're 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 suddenly honoring your boundaries and you're feeling what is yes. out of alignment. But it's also letting go of all these programs that we created. Like you mentioned nice earlier. Program. People yeah. pleasing. You mentioned yes. that. So that was one thing. That was one of the things that back then I thought that was a good quality about me. I was like, yes. oh, I'm always doing these other things for other people. And I'm, yeah, like I didn't, you don't realize until yeah. afterwards, right? And when, um, and when we stop that pattern for the outside world, it seems like, okay, but she's not pleasing anymore. She's not so nice. But not, it means yeah. like you're, you're, you're coming into this centeredness in yourself and from this space so that you can give from overflow instead of from, okay, yeah. I'm just doing it for outside validation. And that's a whole different shift. But there's so, I think for everyone on this journey, sometimes it's like what, what really is important in this ascension journey as well is like staying centered in yourself because yeah, yeah. you will sometimes stumble upon some people's opinions or they will find like the 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 path you're moving on to is not per se the image of okay the nice girl or the image of but it is the truth and the centeredness in ourselves and there is power and there's resilience but it also means that we need to find it in ourselves and I think for all of us on this journey that's so important because as we break free from all these layers it also means we're breaking free from a lot of images that people have from us and for some, they will they will cheer us on, but there will also be people or souls or that will that don't like that because they suddenly feel disconnected from the, us. And they the suddenly, change, and yeah. the change, yes, and and that's hard. And but it's it's understanding that we're not doing anything wrong. It is really yes. being in this space of love and commitment to growth and to the light that is within us. And yeah, so I think that's yeah. the key. I, and I love I love all that, and I love how you you focus a lot, like your whole thing is you know a uh, love loving you know through love yeah. transformation through love and that is perfect it is literally the perfect you know way to transform mm -hmm. through love and love uh, just to remind people that it's not just loving externally it's and yourself it's loving all parts of yourself yeah. so that the jealous part of you that comes up you know instead of rejecting it and you know trying yes. to resist it no love it yeah. understand it learn where it came from right yeah. heal it back into wholeness type thing right yes. um much of these parts of ourselves they just need to be witnessed mm -hmm. and accepted and it's almost like they kind of upgrade and melt back back into you like into a in, in a in a in an upgraded way right mm -hmm. um but the thing is we 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 have we fracture off parts of ourselves right so much and it doesn't take a lot of trauma to do that you don't need a lot of intense trauma to do that it can be just you know um neglect you or mm -hmm. you never felt understood by your parents or you know like those i call them micro traumas but they're traumas nonetheless because they take a part of you and fracture it off or get you to 
to shove away and disown a part of you, right? That part of you that wants and needs to be loved and accepted. We all need that, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to note because sometimes we can feel like, okay, if, if we see what is happening in the world and in a larger scale, we can sometimes think, okay, but I, I, I had a comfortable life and I, I had everything and all of that. But it's understanding that we're all going through our own growth journey and we're all in a way being challenged and we all have wounds and we all have parts that we've pushed away in, in whatever form. And, and it's coming into wholeness again with all of these parts with love. And but but I think also in your story, like you had all these ways of connecting and talking with animals and and nature and and, and spirit beings and all of that. But it's also um, coming back to that space where you're open for that again. I don't know how that, yes. because you were so open as a child, but then you went into this period of being in this mess. Yeah. What, 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 what supported you to open that again? And well, that's a great, that's a great question. So yeah, I did shut down a large part of <laughs> my abilities for a period of time. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said, when I finally made that decision with all, all of my being to reclaim who I was, um, it, and love who I was, I had a lot to work through because I had a lot of, um, almost like resentment and ideas about my gifts being curse, being a curse rather than a blessing, right? It took me a long time to love and appreciate my unique makeup, my gifts and abilities, because people, I don't think they understand how painful it was for someone like me who felt everything, who felt everything, to live in this world we are constantly doing things transgressions against other life forms right like even just cutting down a tree or whatever i felt everything so viscerally that in order to survive i had to shut down i would not have been able to ever you know interact with another human leave the house or anything like it's just too painful everything right mm -hmm. and the visions too they got me in a terrible spot like my mother was afraid of me she literally was afraid of me didn't want to love me, didn't go near me. She would, I would hear her talking to people like she thought the devil was in me because in her religious belief, right? Only Jesus could have those gifts, right? So um, it, it, I didn't see my gifts as gifts, right? So it took me a long time of sorting through my past and um, beginning to love myself and then beginning to appreciate, accept and then appreciate my abilities. And when that happens, when you reclaim who you are, those abilities don't just return. It opens up a gate and they expand. They expand. And like you touch upon all the time, like the love, mm -hmm. then when you love yourself like that, that just opens up this portal. And, you know, like you said earlier uh, already today, that there is no limit. We're constantly expanding. There is no end to our expansion and the really exciting part right now on the planet is now is we can experience expansion while in the physical body yes right normally we have to die <laughs> yeah. before we remember our expanded self i'm like oh i'm a you know this giant being that's you know fit into a little body once but no now we can have that experience yeah. while in the body still and that's the fascinating the yeah. fascinating thing right now yeah but in that, and I love as you shared this, because in that it's also important that in a way our ego takes the backseat because otherwise also our ego tries to understand all these sure. multidimensional abilities that are coming online. Yes. And it is not to be understood. No. It, it is to be felt <laughs> in our body and to experience in our subtle energies and, and just yes. our inner knowing instead of with our mind and our logic and our strategic ways of being. And so it's also inviting us to expand that part again and to really be open. But that is coming back to okay, I'm confident enough within myself. Because I think as well as you shared, I love that the abilities opening up, blooming open, but you need mm -hmm. to feel confident to say yes to, okay, I'm ready to show show me again. I'm ready to feel again. I'm ready exactly. to experience. I can handle it now. I have the abilities. Yes. And the, yeah, I think that's- uh, You're right. I, I can handle it now. You have yes. to be in that frame of mind. Yeah. Um, and it's like a muscle, right? We're born mm -hmm. with muscles. We can move our arms. But what yeah. if you actually start working out and using that muscle? Then it grows, right? Yeah. So what I thought were really turned on gifts as a as a child, like they just, you know, expanded greatly because I'm now using them. I'm claiming, I've claimed my gifts and I'm I'm using them, right? So, yeah. and I'm using them to be of service, which is like, 
that's why you're here with these gifts to be of service, right? I love that. Yeah. And then we can also from a very different space because then we can be with playfulness and we can be with openness and curiosity. And then it's like, yeah, because again, also when, when we try to open it with control, it's like, okay, it needs to happen this way or it needs to happen with, it's all in the, in the yeah. surrender into this greater version of ourselves. 100%. Yes. Yeah. It is because the, you know, the human mind, the rational mind, um, is never going to be able to understand what the higher mind can, right? So like you said, it's the intuition. You have to follow that um, and not try and control everything or understand everything. Um, yeah. Like you said, it's a surrender because um, that the rational mind cannot understand because it's only built to understand this physical uh, realm that you've grown up in. So anything outside of that, it's not really going to be able to grasp. No, no. And what 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 have you noticed like in this time? Because the last couple of weeks, whenever you're tuning into this, but the last couple couple of weeks have been intense upgrades as well. And and what 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 are you feeling like is is coming, or is is this next step we're all being invited to step into, or what what is your inner guidance sharing about what is to come, or yeah, yeah. So this year feels really magical. Mm -hmm. Um, I. From, from things I've seen, from things I feel when I feel into, there there's definitely, um, this could be a whole podcast episode yes. on its own, right? But <laughs> <laughs> um, there is those of us who are on this path, right? And holding a, a vibration of stability and love and future outcome. What it, we're putting into the field, yeah. what we're creating, which is, you know, I don't know what your listeners are familiar with and how much you talk about, you know, kind of a new reality, a new, a new earth. Often you hear that term, right? Um, but it's a real thing and it's already here. It's not, we're going to, it's already here. Many people are already accessing it. Yeah. Um, it it's just not completely stable, stabilized a hundred percent, right? But there are, there is going to be for humanity, like some who choose to still play out those lower vibrational dynamics, right? Um, but I'm not going to talk too much about that. But what I see is that people on this path, you know, because I've been working with people for a very long time, the it's just like a hockey stick curve. The amount of people who are awakening, the amount of how quickly mm -hmm. people are opening up now is mind blowing. Yeah. Like what took me like, you know, weeks and weeks to try and, you know, um, let's say process something people are doing like in in seconds or minutes right yes and I, I've had to change some of my uh, my processes and my my private sessions because people don't need the whole process anymore they're they're mm -hmm. they're just they're it's like yeah. there's enough of us on the planet who have done so much deep work that you know people who are stepping into it now it's like the template's already there the energetics it's just like so much easier so much faster and people are able to open up and awaken their gifts now so much easier um and they don't even have to nest like they're, they're on their own like some of the people coming to me now they're like i don't know some all of a sudden now like i'm just like I'm, you know, I know when my friends are going to call or I know what my husband's going to say, you know, their telepathy is coming on or there, there's these other, like, I'm, I'm really starting to feel stuff and I don't understand what I'm feeling. Yeah. Right. So I'm helping them work through that. But so just naturally, organically, right. Yeah. There's like this gorgeous, like stirring energy, I call it. Right. Yes. And, you know, that's so exciting for me, especially, you know, when someone comes to me and when I'm teaching in my courses and stuff too, it's like, it's just so fun. And you said there were curiosity too, like, you know, just come with curiosity and fascination. And that is like such a great state of being to explore your gifts in. Right. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. So I think for those who are um, looking at it in that, you know, from how they want to experience life, yeah. you know, are going to be, you know, on that, on that path. And this year is mm -hmm. a, a year of incredible transformation. And really the word magic comes to mind. Like it's just, yeah some magical quantum leaps can happen, right? Yes. Um, yes. If you stay in that flow and the, and you're who you really are, which is, you know, a being of love who came here out of love. Yeah. Right? I love it. Yeah. And, and it is in the openness. I, I noticed it as well. Things are 
shifting so quickly because it's but but it's also because we're all talking about it suddenly yeah. we're able to talk about the subtle exactly. energies of our being or, in, or intuition or i connected to a being of light and it shared <laughs> this or i i talked to a tree or i hugged yes. someone <laughs> like there's such a different energy right now and and i truly i also like the i, I love the way you share because there is a certain foundation and when we collectively choose I, that's also what i noticed the more we tap into the field of love consciousness the quicker the connection goes and the quicker also the opening of new yeah. vibrational wisdom higher vibrational wisdom but it is because we're collectively choosing and by that also the shifts go much more quicker and it opens in beautiful ways so i love the the hockey stick or the yes the, <laughs> the curve, but it truly is and and it's just again it's saying yes it's saying yes to whatever is coming in beautiful ways it's saying yes to the openness in ourselves to the abilities and to coming back to not understanding with our mind but feeling with our hearts and and mm -hmm. this this yeah inner knowing i think everyone in our own unique way because you you you, you as well you you guide people in opening their all their their senses mm -hmm. there are so many ways May, maybe you want to share a little bit about the different ways we can connect to to spirit. yeah so, so to, we're to... we're all different so we're yeah. all unique so one standard template just know that we're all different so some people may be very feeling oriented mm -hmm. right and that is a you know superpower your superpower that you you know i would suggest leaning into that and trying to feel more so many people though probably because it's uncomfortable to open yourself up to feel everything. But so many people, they want to be clairvoyant or yes. they want to be clairaudient, right? But their biggest superpower is actually their clairsentient ability, right? So I would ask you to, I would suggest, you know, kind of sitting in, okay, what, what is, what things come naturally to me? Do I walk into a room and automatically get a feeling of the vibe, right? Or do I get goosebumps easily when I hear the truth or something like that, right? Um, then that's, you know, uh, then start with your clairvoyance. When you lean into your strong suit, let's say, it will automatically open up your other clairs. Mm -hmm. So start with, and another one is clairvoyance though, right? So yeah. uh, I think most of us know what clairvoyance is. However, most people don't know, don't know, excuse me, that there are many different kinds and flavors of clairvoyance, right? And then there's other things like seership that is mm -hmm. uh, using your clairvoyance, but going way beyond clairvoyance, right? It's yeah. feeling into timelines, seeing uh, future potentials and past, to, you know, past is a relative term because it's all yeah. happening now. Adjacent timelines is what I, the term I use, right? Yes. Um, and clairaudience, right? Yeah you know, that's probably more, the less common, right? For people who are just kind of waking up, maybe. Um, the claircognizance is pretty common, actually. But most people don't uh, validate it. Mm -hmm. They don't yeah. realize that it's their claircognizance come in, or they say, or their mind says, oh, that can't be true. Or, oh, well, no, that's probably, you know, they like, yeah. right? So um, I see that a lot, that people just they're like don't realize that it's their clair cognizance right those yeah. are the, like the primary clairs but there are way more clairs beyond that right you can have clear taste where you're um you know you you taste things at a distance or from you know yeah. other than what you're experiencing right now same thing with smell right you can smell um there are so many other other ways but i I would just tune into any way it comes into you, even if you don't know, oh, is that my claircognizance or my clairaudience or mm -hmm. is that, clair you don't, it doesn't matter, especially yeah. at the beginning. Just the key is to take a step in that direction of whatever information you received. And always when you're checking, be in the heart. Yeah. You don't want to be in the mind. Make sure you're in the heart, in that heart space, feeling that love, feeling, you know, like, that I always say like the smile in the heart, like, you know, that space where yes. you're just like the space that you live in, Kim, you know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, yeah. and tune into whatever guidance or information is coming through. And the key is acting on it because if you repeatedly ignore your intuition, yes. right. If you follow and act on it, then the soul, the higher self is like, Oh, she's actually acting on it now. So we're going to give her more resources. She's deciding she's committed to, her, her knowing her mm -hmm. the path, right? So we're going to give her more, give her more, but you're not going to be given the big stuff until you actually validate the little stuff. I right. That. So that, yes. that gut feeling you get about uh, going to a place or, you know, like a classic example you hear a lot of is you're, you're driving home and you get this, 
intuitive nudge that you should turn right, but that's not the way home. So, you know, but you, you know, you do it yeah. anyway and you realize there was an accident, right? So it's like, yes. pay attention to the so-called little mm. moments. And that is like a muscle that begins to build. Yeah. I love that. And it's understanding what, what I love in your story as well. It's understanding we all have it, but in different forms. And, and some of us really want to hear it very clear, like a voice talking to us or a very yeah. clear image, because then our mind can understand and we have to validate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but it's understanding, especially in the beginning, it's coming very subtle. And I love, as you shared as yeah, well, yeah. In, in my book, I share a little bit like it's a water tap. And in yeah. the beginning, it's a little bit open. But when we then use the water efficiently, then suddenly the water tap will open more and more. But if we throw the water away beautiful. because we're not willing to listen, it will stay closed. It doesn't That's open anymore. That's a beautiful anymore. analogy. Yes. But, but I think it's important beautiful. to understand. So if you get the nudge to go somewhere, follow that. And in that, beautiful things unfold and it opens up yeah. more. But I, I didn't, I, I love that you shared. I didn't know that per se, that when you follow one or one opens up more, that suddenly all the others open up more. So I think that's a beautiful... Yes. Yeah, it's and it's it's it, part of it is pretty like when you think about it, it makes sense. Yes. So, for example, let's say you're feeling something right. And so you're you're really leaning into your ability to feel. And mm -hmm. so let's say you, you feel something. Then when you stay in that and you're like really like curiosity and you're like, what is this feeling? Whatever, yeah. even if you don't notice and you start looking at it. Mm -hmm. what happens when your attention goes to something it automatically starts using your other abilities so then you might see a color right yeah. Yeah. and then you might feel a texture and you're like well this texture what color would it be right mm -hmm. like it's it's almost like like that like when you lean into whatever claire is your let's say your easiest one yes. and you actually are curious and you're exploring your being will start giving you other information yeah I love that. Yeah. But then it's being willing to be in the awareness, being willing to yeah. be in the now and to be focused on what on, on the side, the first sign, and then the next will we feel. So I love that. Yeah, that yeah, beautiful. So everyone, I would I would say just take a moment today, whenever you're tuning in, but take a moment to see what kind of signs you're receiving and what kinds yeah. of yeah. sensations and inspirations are sparking and up the conversation. Yeah. And how you're receiving it. I always yeah. that brings so much insight. So when you get a hit, an intuitive hit. Ask yeah. yourself, okay, how did that come in? How did I know that? How did that, mm -hmm. how did I receive that? Right. Yeah. Then you start getting clues to your own makeup and how your own gifts work for you. Cause we're all unique. Yes. Right. Yeah, we are. Uh, I've seen so many wild things, but we're all yeah. so weak. Like, you know, there are people that see with, you know, their ears and there are, you know, and yes. me, I feel with my eyes. Right. So it's mm -hmm. like, it can come in all kinds of, of ways. Right. Mm -hmm. So just know that, um, even if you've never heard of anyone else, anyone else, anyone else having that ability, don't, yes. di don't discount no. it. Yes. Don't discount it because that's your special way of receiving information or that's your special, unique ability. Yes. And your thing to anchor here on earth and to exactly. share. Them. So yes, that's, I think that's a beautiful, but again, that's coming back to this space of just owning who we are in all our perfect imperfections and all our quirks and all our, our, our beautiful abilities and all of it. So I think that's amazing. Yeah. And I want and to say, you, yes, yeah. yes. I was just going to say when you, when you love and accept yourself, yeah. it's so much easier to heal trauma, right? or to uh, melt away anything that is not you, yeah. right? And yes. essentially that's what the path that you're being called to step forward in is to be who yeah. you really are and let go of who you are not, right? Yeah. All the things that you grew up being taught, you should be this, you should do this, right? Mm -hmm. This is how you should think, this is how you should act, this is how you should dress, right? Yes. Is letting go of all of that and really just coming home to who you really are. Yeah. yeah, I think that's uh, in essence where we're all here for. And for me, it's love. And for you, it's a beautiful other modality. But it, but it's like it it's really coming back to this essential part of who we are. And, and it's embracing all that we are with love, with compassion, with nourishment. And yeah, so I think that's I think there are beautiful gems shared within this conversation. And, oh, and I love I we can talk forever. <laughs> yeah, we can. Yes. Oh, well, maybe, maybe we'll do it the next time. But I want to <laughs> share if you want to know how you can work with Huda Liva, you can find her information below the this audio or video, whatever way you're tuning in. And as we're almost coming to a place of completion, what would be one beautiful 
advice or inspiration or guidance you would give to everyone tuning in at this moment? Oh, I would say um, be easy on yourself. So yes. many people on this path, I see it all the time. They're put, they're hard on themselves. Oh, I've been trying with this and it's not working. And I, or I, you know, I, I, um, I, you know, I em emotions, right. I get, you know, and it's like the more, or like, for example, um, something comes up that you perceive as being a bad quality, you know, mm -hmm. like I gave an example earlier about, oh, I got jealous or, um, or, you know, have, you know, something and we resist it and we want to throw it away. Right. Well, that's not going to <laughs> no. help you heal it. Right. Yes. By resisting it and continuing to push it away. Right. It wants to be looked at. And so when something arises that you judge. Right. Mm -hmm. So in other words, don't judge yourself so harshly. But when you find yourself judging yourself, really, that's an invitation to go, OK, look at OK, I was having a judgment here. What does this part of me want to say? What does this part of me need? Mm -hmm. What am I, you know, what are the lessons that I can glean from it? What's the wisdom I can take from it and what needs to be healed within me so that, you know, this part of me can, can come home to me. Yeah. I love that. Such a beautiful message. And, and it's again, looking through the lens of love and then seeing, I, I love it as you share jealousy as well, because I, I created an article this week and, and I, yeah. I related jealousy to, it's like a deep desire activator because in, mm -hmm. in essence, there's a part of us that has a deep desire to experience a certain thing. And it doesn't have to do anything with what is causing this jealousy. It's something within ourselves. And when we're willing to look at it with love and compassion, we suddenly see, okay, this is what I truly desire to experience. It's just signaling something. And then we can go on this exploration, but it's going without the filter of judgment and in the openness and the curiosity. Yeah. Okay, I see you. What do you want to share? So I think that's a beautiful- That's perfect. That's yeah. gorgeous. Yes. That, but I that, think that compassion- Everybody and... read that article. Yes, <laughs> yes <laughs> it. I will share. <laughs> So, but I want to thank you for sharing your light and for you stepping up into the space of sharing your uniqueness with the world and going through your journey and now sharing with others. So thank you for your light and your connection and your radiance and everyone tuning in again. Thank you for who you are and also contributing to this sacred conversation in your unique way. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next Soul Lot podcast. So for now, much love and I'll thank talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you for joining this episode of Soul Love. If you want to find out more about what we do, you can find it below. And I'll see you in the next episode. Much love.